All right, this is the Merry Christmas, Happy New Year message. I'm so thankful that it's the end of the year. It would be nice if we could turn the page and everything would just be back to normal because the last two years have been interesting to say the least. But guys, remember that God said to not let our hearts be troubled. And if he said that, he probably knew that we would have the temptation to let our hearts be troubled. Believe that he's still on the throne. Know that he's not walking around, wringing his hands and being like, oh my goodness, I can't believe what the people people have done. I did not see that coming. He totally knows the end from the beginning. He's got a plan. We probably know just a very, very small portion of it. There's a lot in the word that talks about end times, that talks about the return of Jesus and the portion of scripture that's like, there'll be famines, there'll be rumors of wars, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, the love of many will grow cold, there'll be earthquakes in various places. And these are all of the birth pangs, he calls it. You know, when a woman gives birth, before the baby comes, there's just like this incredible amount of pressure. And just like that, guys, the end is nigh. <laughs> Jesus is coming back soon. And so we shouldn't be surprised at the things going on in the world at all. We should rejoice. In fact, that's what the word says, rejoice. Don't be surprised at what you're going through like it's some strange thing. Be so full of joy at any persecution, any tribulation that comes against you. Be Rejoice for your names are written in heaven. Praise God. We want to keep a really good attitude about everything. And I know that's maybe easier said than done, but we can do it. So because it's also the end of the year, I just want to praise God for what he's done this year. This year has totally taken a 180. And I really want to thank you guys for praying for me and coming alongside me in this whole thing, because it is definitely a walk of faith. And I'm just Abraham going out there where uh, I can't see anything. But I just want to share a little bit of what God has done. So when I left Wyoming, he told me just take what you need. I was about to buy a house and I saw pretty well everything that I had and I packed up my SUV and went out on the road and even along this trip God's been like you don't need that you don't need that you don't need that and I'm like God I'm down to being a college kid for crying out loud like can I keep my suitcase up close <laughs> he's cleaned out so much stuff on the outside and it feels actually really good i know that we can get a little bit attached to things maybe if the lord asks you to get rid of something physical on the outside something that you have to give it away to somebody to get rid of it and you're just like okay yeah sure definitely that yielding to God is excellent, but I tell you, I was I was not there. And through this process, God's been like, Nancy, get rid of this, Nancy, get rid of that. To the point that I'm like, what else do you want, Lord? I'll just, <laughs> I've become completely not attached to any physical item, which is very interesting. I know whatever's ahead, I'll look back and I'll be like, oh, that's why you told me that, okay. And then the other part of it is he's cleaned the inside. And I know that's such a cliche thing to say. This has been a very deep heart surgery of God saying, hey, Nancy, let's talk about this, shall we? I'm like, oh, 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 oh. I don't wanna talk about that, Lord. Okay, well, you know what? we need to. You know, I want you to talk to this person over here, or I want you to make it right over there, and I want you to tell that person this, and and this, and this, and this. And so one by one, I'm like, oh, okay, 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 okay. In the last video, I mentioned the more that you yield to the Lord, the next time he asks you to do something, it gets easier to say yes. The more you say yes, it's like, yes, yes, yes. It's just easier. Until last week when he was like, okay, Nancy, the last thing, I want you to get rid of your journals. Oh man, I've written in a journal since I was 15 years old. Probably about once every month or two, at least. Stuff that I go through, relationships, job stuff, family, transitions, just life. And he, when he asked me to get rid of those, I was like, you, what? I didn't really want to because I was like, I put a lot of work into those. He said, Nancy, I do not want you remembering anything negative that's happened. I will bring the positive things to your remembrance, but you've written a lot of negative things down and I do not want any record of them. I do not want you to be looking at it and reliving and replaying that video in your head. And I don't know if that ministers to somebody out there, but there's a scripture in the word in the book of Philippians where Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and pressing forward to the mark, to the high prize, the calling of Christ Jesus. He said, forgetting, forgetting it all. <laughs> and that's become very real to me in the last 
week or so. And so for any of you out there who have things that have attached themselves to you, things that are just not right and you've buried them, stuffed them away, and you've just wanted to just lock them away and never look at them again. God wants to deal with some of those things and um, he'll let us have the option of saying yes or no, but I highly recommend saying yes. Your mind will be clear, your emotions will be more level. You will absolutely come through on the other side so fresh and renewed like a car wash. I love going through car washes like the ones with all the things going on and the soap everywhere. God wants to clean you out. Maybe on the outside too. Maybe he's asked you to get rid of stuff on the outside and maybe he wants to talk you about the inside. Is it fun? Absolutely not. I have had many tears and <laughs> hours on the road through this whole trip. I'm like, Lord, I don't want don't want to talk about that. I don't want to disappoint you in this, but he makes all things new. He's the great comforter, great counselor. And I feel like he's been the counselor and I've been the one on the couch explaining things. And he's like, okay, okay, now we're going to let that go. But it's a good thing. And as one who has just come through many tears and many, um, oh shoot, <laughs> um, many unexpected changes this year and things that I never thought would happen. God takes you through. He always brings you out the other side and there's some emotions to go through. There's some things to deal with and there's definitely challenges and trials to life. But I just want to thank God that he's a father who cares for his kids and loves them enough to help them with things and, and to help us deal with things. So I didn't mean to get emotional. Um, I just encourage you guys to sit down with the Lord before the end of the year and let him ask you some questions and let him minister to you, bring up things that need to be dealt with because it's worth it. So, okay, happy new year, Merry Christmas. I hope you guys have an awesome time with family, friends, or whoever you're getting together with. And if you're by yourself, you're not by yourself. The Holy Ghost is with you. Look up, keep soaking him in and not the world. Soak his word in and what he says to you. I will see you in 2022.